Hey everybody. So I finally made time to do the follow up video for the Crystal Collector. It'll be one of many because this is the first story I've made in over two years and I might as well clue y'all in on the creative process. So um if I would have started doing um YouTube videos years ago, I would have been able to take y'all through the process of turning my Mighty Ducks fan fiction into an actual official trust on error story as well as probably the worst list and those are two big stories that I have to make videos for but um the Crimson Collective so the last video I was talking about you know Dizzy Crater Omega Boston Splashworth Proof all of the characters that were made off of people that I know and were chosen to stay with the direction of the story now the rest of the Crimson Collective um, has some X prayed up, Sir Sworn, all the way down to Arcarios and Dracos and Quantum. Those you will see the images of, and they the man chosen for them is what the characters will look like. But um, I do want to talk about them and try to explain some choices with them, and that'll be a one two three. Nineteen. There's nineteen characters um that are not based off of people I know. Um these faces come from complete strangers to models to porn actors. It depends, um, because I wanted them to look a certain way and when I couldn't find it certain look that wasn't, you know, a porn actor, then I had to, you know, stick with a porn actor. But um Yikesville and Metronome. I wanted them to be based off of two very important people in my life, but um, they gave me the no, and one of them I understood, the other one I haven't talked to about it, but um, they still my N word, so it's all good. But the rest of these choices, um, I switched around a lot of things when I was making the story official, and majority of these men like probably 10 of them were based off of people I know and when it came down to deciding how many ethnicities were in the story yes yeah, not a word I wanted to even it out make it balanced so um I had to take out a lot of white people I know a lot of white people a lot of them all right and when I was Xing them out I was replacing them with you know Asians and Indian type ethnicities um but to actually finish the follow-up video I'm gonna start with Handsome X. Handsome X is of course Handsome and I made him based off of the whole phenomenon behind Handsome Jack on Borderlands and Handsome Max got his name because of course he's handsome. He's one of the heroes that don't have a mask. But um also he lives a very secluded life. He owns um a gun range and a dojo. He manages the operations of both of them. But still people have not put together his face with his actual human persona. But it's not like that would affect him anyway because of how powerful he is in his regular life as well. Um, I had fun making up Handsome Mix. He was originally based off a good buddy of mine. And a, a lot of the decisions for making them from people that I know to switch around so that the races are more even in the story. Um, that one was kind of hard to do. But um, Handsome X and his superpowers are great. Um, X Lion, he can morph into um a lion human hybrid put in a lot of work um can't remember the character's name right now but um there was a lion on bloody roar maybe sheena's father i'm not sure but 
Handsome X has all of those capabilities as well. And then there's Prayed Up. Prayed Up is one of the guys of the stories. He is a fantasy world historian. He's also a king god, so he's revered as highly important and he doesn't want any of the information from the eons ago to disappear. So he protects a very important library of information when it pertains to Edgemere, the fantasy realm. Sir Sworn. I switch around his look so often it's ridiculous. But Sir Sworn in his superpower, uh, Laser Ladybug. Um, laser is spelled like that because of the superpower version of Laser. You don't have to have technology to create fixated and potent and concentrated light to make lasers. Sir Sworn is also an android designer and a fleet commander. So um, there are two people in the Crimson Collective that design androids. Sir Sworn is one of them and Zermuda is the other one. And Zermuda comes with an android army and when Sir Sworn finally gets the soaked in blood puzzle piece around his neck, he's he's gonna bring a plethora of androids um with him as well as a voice drop space and try to stop the alien invasion. But Sir Sworn is used to commanding armies and whatnot, so he's highly great when it comes to the leadership capacity. Apocalypse, on the other hand, is not so great when it comes to leadership. He is a solo dolo. He is quite aggressive, but finesses it very well when it comes to his spellbinding abilities and creating spells and whatnot. He's a professional mercenary, so he's traveled. He's been in all of the galaxies, just like everybody else in the Crimson Collective. Over his um, superhero, um, his superhero career. Blur. Blur is a high seeker operative of Purge. And Blur, um, he was originally based off of somebody I knew in the army. And he was quite attractive too, but Blur looks completely different from him. But I wanted Blur to have a specific look. So when I was um, making, the, making the decisions to X out certain people, um, that one was rather easy because of what I wanted Blur to look like. And with his high wind superpowers, it's very easy for him to turn into a, um, a tornado and cover his tracks. Um, he can... Well, one of his best abilities is blowing wind in people's eyes. And that's how he keeps his cover because people can't concentrate on his face. If they do see him, if they happen to see him, he'll just make wind come out of nowhere and have their eyes shut almost immediately when he senses somebody's presence. And he can summon wind in places where he knows that there's space. And he doesn't have to see the space in order to make the wind, but the wind will come whenever he summons it. Euphorium. He's a professional photographer and a director. He works very close with everybody um, who's a silver screen action movie star and who works on television. So Euphorium knows um, about five people within the Crimson Collective and he's quite trustworthy. Um, he can make movies out of nothing and can pretty much do the same on a battlefield. Crave. Crave is one of the guides of the stories. He um he's a spirit guide and a spirit hunter. Um he feels like his purpose is to set ghosts free and whatnot, so he would do that intentionally and smoothly. Um like uh, take for instance, you know the movie um, The 13 Ghosts that had Rod Digger in it and in that movie, if he was in that movie he wouldn't have to have that glass house enchanted with all of that stuff on it to keep the ghosts where they need to be he can um, mind control ghosts um, possess ghosts use ghosts for his biddings um, 
go through walls, go through force fields if he generates enough power, things like that. And he's also a king god of one of the own um, realms. And to elaborate on it, um, ro royalty gods, they have um, lands all across Edgemer, and Edgemer isn't just like a regular globe planet. It when when they have children, they give their children a piece of land, and they generate the land however big they want it, and say that um you're going around the globe you come across this place and as you can see i have a, a little bit curved like going around the planet they can make up a, a land mass above the planet and that will be um a realm for a child if they desire um then there's lux devoe he's a black market arrow dealer which is um in a past video like arrow means superpower and the ether system in a super being is all blue and it's very tiny it's like um have you ever seen the map of the circulatory system and how it lingers all across the whole body and whatnot the ether system does that too and what he provides is different drugs for different people different um different pieces of technology different artifacts and things like that like he moves a lot of weight and he does it by himself he's very trustworthy when it comes to people wanting to get things and Lux Devoe fucking delivers like Domino and there's really no way of stopping him from doing what he does he does a lot of illegal stuff but he's also um, a superhero that makes sure people um, survive whenever they get caught up in the situations that Purge cleans up. So, um, say that uh, there's a chemical spill and they need a certain radiation drug that costs nearly a hundred grand and whatnot, and you know, everybody's not rich. So, um, people have to, you know, work off the debt and whatnot. But if they can get in touch with Lux Devo, he'll provide them that drug uh, free of charge just so that um, it'll help build a sense of community and compassion with people so they don't grow up being you know villains and shit so he does a lot of um damage control in the sense if that makes sense uh yikesville he's an astronomer and the self-proclaimed villain paparazzi he is always up in villains business you will never catch him not doing anything but making sure he knows what villains are doing and yikesville he he often gets in trouble with everybody because he doesn't know how to mind his damn business. He is always up in somebody's business, even if it's um a good good guy's business. And his eavesdropping skills are ridiculous. <laughs> oh, I have fun designing this character. It was fucking great. So um he'll be one of the hilarious factors of the story. Metronome is a time traveler. Um, as you can see, Tom Ray is a Super Bowl and he's and Ray is one of the um, astronomy superpower uh, subcategories, and it's just like light, and but it's not like light the element. Rays is just rays of energy, and he's a peace crusader and an assassin. Um, can get away with a lot of things, but um, one of the things about the Trustone area is the people that protect time. Um, they don't really, they, they protect it, but it's, it's like they have, it's like they have no worries. They, they don't want specific things to happen, but I can't go into detail of that because there's so many time wielders and all of my stories and whatnot, but they don't want specific things to happen. Like, um, like when solar systems, um, blow up and whatnot he don't want anybody like abusing superpowers to change the event in time when like a star is a, supposed to explode um things of that nature like they don't care about um humanity's evils um trying to stop one specific plan 
people abusing their time superpowers to go wherever they want they don't really care about that they only care about nature in a sense so if somebody's trying to come up with some kind of time altering feat that's when the time cops will step in and a metronome is not a time cop he will more than likely not be a time cop a time cop until certain years in his life and time widows are natural immortals as well uh yammers um he's a music professor he's the one with the culinary powers the only character with culinary powers in the store because i've been making up more characters and shit but yammers um it's quite great <laughs> His burrito game is off the chain. Um, his flower throwing game is off the chain. Like he can, uh, like your your eyes are not safe with him at all. Cause his, his pie throw game is the main thing about him. And like like you you'll be in a situation where somebody has a button and um a, a trigger in their hand, and you like. Is he really gonna throw a pie in that person's face? Because the first thing they gonna do is press that button. But if he can jam the trigger enough the way it doesn't activate with jelly or some other food item, he'll do that too. Um, Yamas is not afraid of anything. Probably one of the bravest ones in the story. And then there's Evertrust. Um, Evertrust is a soccer coach. Um, but he's also an ally to a lot of people in the store like um they call him ever trust for a reason and um mirror wielders are usually considered two-faced but um in his case he didn't get that um attribute but um ever trust is highly powerful he's like um silver surfer in a sense giganto um giganto is a universal monster hunter He's uh, one of the seven foot tall characters, big venom build and whatnot. He can transform into monsters, use monster forces without transforming into them. Has a giant barbarian whipping sword. Um, he is highly powerful and a lot of people think the high heavens that he's a good guy. Um, Giganto also has a twin sister in a story called Cataclysm. You'll find out about her one day too. And the two of them on a battlefield together. Good luck. Metalhead. He's a silver screen rom com movie star in the real life. And when he's a hero, he's just running around headbutting everything he can headbutt. Um it's one of those things this uh a little personality trait, um cause the superpower um is charm metal uh charm hammerhead short and the headbutting keeps him from getting a certain kind of headaches when he's not in zoanthro form it's a uh, it's something that he likes to do it's a uh, it's a little quirk about him then there's power depot who's a major space colony president um and this would be the space colony asteriosis um which is the space colony that perfected the um the ozone layer technique uh that allowed for space colonies to make artificial ozone layers so that they would have natural water and natural weather within a space colony um you know they they reduce winds but they wanted the rain so they can have that natural rain flow natural water flow within a space colony and when they perfected that um uh that technology it became very helpful around the whole universe um most space colonies have an artificial ozone layer but uh power depot made up this um this tech called the never atlas and it helps people find spirit animals and um you know, spirit uh, animals are highly blessed spirits from humans that transform into um, 
spirit animals and they just you know roam whenever uh all over the place and whatnot and it helps people who have the um the personality traits that deem them unfit to be in society the um the recluses and things like that it gives them um an outlet so that they don't become like villains and hazardous to society so if they have a spirit animal it's easier for them to be human and secluded or recluse um versus them not having a spirit animal so uh power depot is rich thrillist uh silver screen action movie star and model he lives a, a very beautiful life traveling all around and whatnot and he helps villains uh well he helps heroes get rid of villains on um, whichever city he's in and whatnot whenever he travels um always carries his costume with him his um backup plans uh all his gear and things like that uh thrillist is like a um he's like a wild card because before the story begins you never know where he's at unless he's like um actually scheduled by his agent to be on set to do a movie or something and then there's Arcurios he's a Gundam fleet commander and he's one of the people that's going to be on um the outpost that meets the um alien species coming into um the human sector um Arcurios is highly decorated highly reliable um he's a bum ass Gundam flight pilot too he got a bum ass Gundam it's fucking beautiful. Um, Dan Andracos. Andracos is the owner of a salon and a barbershop called Dome Paradise. You can get your shit hooked up if you ever meet him. Um, his spell binding techniques are off the chain too, but he's very uh, appearance oriented because you know he owns a barbershop, so he always with the um, the total line um, cross all the T's, dot all the I's kind of person. OCD um so you can count on him keeping things in order whenever he's around because he will he will let everybody know what's the plan and whatnot um so it's great to have him on board with that leadership and that's the um that's one of the reasons why the Crimson Collective chose him Quantum on the other hand um he's a neurosurgeon and an emergency room surgeon um he gets his kicks um, from saving lives, doing the unthinkable in an emergency room, from you know regular domestic situations to high octane superpower uh, situations. Um, he has been called to save lives of people in purge um, if they get caught up in some shit and they end up um, fatally wounded. He'll come in and help with um, saving their lives naturally as well as um getting in contact with people that can save lives when it comes down to um dire situations where life as a superpower can't get to them and they don't want to and they want to avoid resurrection uh resurrection comes with a lot of prices um i'm not going to get into the list right now but um quantum is very important and as you can see he has sword of the universe as a superpower and this superpower mm. so Sword of the Universe. You basically have the world in your hand um, in the form of sword in any shape, form the weather decides. And Quantum can cut planets in half. He can um, decimate solar systems if he wants to. Um, but the curse with sort of the universe as a superpower is if that person um it's a lot of um control issues when it comes to it because they can get into see get into these fucked up situations where they if they are killed if they are mind controlled um they can literally pass a superpower on to somebody else and um People that can siphon as a superpower, which will be life or death wielders, any other people that can absorb things, um, orbital as a superpower, they can they can take his superpower and do exactly what he does. And um, 
if he can't cut a plane in the half, they won't be able to cut a plane in the half. In half. But with sword as a uh, sword of the universe as a superpower, you can create an army almost instantly. So, um, you know that Hellboy movie about the Golden Skeleton Army. That's quantum walking in an everyday life. Um, so his his metal skeleton brigade or his um. T-1000 Brigade can do anything that he wants them to. So the Crimson Collective hopped on it immediately. So um, I'm going to end the video on that note. Just wanted to tell everybody the rest of the selected of the Crimson Collective. But I also want to read off the name, the code names of the other characters that I created. And I created 26 of them. You have Avosia, Bazooka Flow, Cataclysm. Sade, Decimitis, Drama, Dilizzle, Gekis Naja, Killiff, Mad City, Naxon, Okazimi, Quality, Cuerva, Rego Resilios, Resende, Scarrows, Scotty Rebel, Shaveta, Sin Rays, Tokyo Diva, Treasures, Viker, Yeet Malone, Zeophany, and Zoism. Until the next video, everybody keep it safe.